Kiori is primarily an off-field geo damage dealer. She summons dolls that deal periodic damage, and normally you only get one doll, but with a geo construct you get two dolls, so you deal double the damage. She can either recast her E to swap to your next character, granting them two follow-up attacks that deal extra damage, or you can attack with her after the first E cast to get a brief geo infusion for her basic attacks. At low constellations, you should almost always press E twice to auto swap to your next character for that extra damage. Because of this, make sure to burst before you use your E. Also keep in mind who you put after Kiori in the team order because she'll swap to the one that's directly after her. If she's team slot 4, this means she'll swap to team slot 1. Kiori mostly scales with defense, so aim to get her to level 90 if possible, same with the weapon. For weapon choices, Harbinger of Dawn is the best recommendation for most players because it's super obtainable. Everyone should have an R5 copy of this. It's also very cheap and effective. You can easily get it to level 90 because it's only a 3 star weapon and it's only around 20% worse than her signature weapon and around 5-10% to worse than her second best option which is the Jade Cutter. The only downside to Harbinger of Dawn is you can't really use her in Farina teams because then you lose the passive. For artifacts, it's a toss-up between 4-piece Husk and 4-piece Golden Troop. It ultimately depends on which one you have actually farmed or which one has better substats. Golden Troop is a better domain to farm if you're starting from scratch because it's in the same domain as Marasasi Hunter which is used for a lot of characters. However, if you also pulled for Ito, then farming Husk makes more sense because Ito also wants Husk pieces. Main stats you want to look for are Defense Percent on the Sands, Geo damage on the goblet and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, whatever brings you closer to the 1 to 2 crit ratio. If you're running golden troop, you can consider a defense percent goblet because you get a bunch of damage bonus from the artifact set itself. Note that golden troop doesn't buff your ultimate damage at all, so if you burst often, then consider husk over golden troop. For subsets, you want to prioritize crit rolls and then defense percent. Attack percent is not useless, she does scale off of attack, but it's not as good as defense percent. And for energy, if you want to burst on every rotation in a mono geo team, aim for around 120 to 130 ER. For her talents, the main talent to level up is her skill, that's where most of her damage comes from, and if you alt every rotation, you can level up the alt as well. I would leave the normal attacks alone unless you have C6 Curie. For constellations, None of them are game changing until you get to C6. C1 is good for Navia teams, but kind of useless for Ito teams. C2 lets you add an extra doll when you burst. C3 buffs your dolls. C4 lets you add another doll when you do your follow-up attacks, which if you remember comes from doing the double E swap into the next character. C5 buffs her bursts. And C6 turns her into an on-fielder, and here you should go for Husk for your artifact set and level up the normal attack talent. Some example teams are Mono Geo Ito and Navia with Kiori. Here's a showcase of my Mono Geo Ito clear in Floor 12 Abyss to show you how Kiori plays in an optimal team. If you're more casual and you're not going for the fastest Abyss clears, then Kiori does function well as a flex unit in almost any team, especially if you pair her with Zhongli. So Zhongli Kiori is a duo that you can pretty much slot into any team and they'll perform very very well. Even without Zhongli, Kiori alone can also be a pretty competent flex option because she doesn't take up any field time at all and her damage comes from her E so you don't even need to care about energy. Here I show you her overworld mob clearing which is not bad. Also, she has the added benefit of letting you do some funny shenanigans with Kazuha. You can do her E swap into Kazuha to get an extra jump in to help you with climbing. So, should you pull for Kiori? Well, she's alright. Nothing crazy. If you like Geo teams, she's definitely a welcome addition. If not, she's probably a skip. But like I said, if you're casual and you like Kiori, she is a flexed unit. You can pretty much put her in any team you want and she'll do fine. It's just when you want to compare the best performance of teams in the Abyss, then she's pretty much limited to certain teams like Mono Geo or Navia teams.